It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday, but let me tell you something, Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming, it's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laughing. It's Friday, Jesus is buried, a soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this glorious day that we have. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will be with us through this worship. We pray for Ken as he prepares our hearts for the message through the music. Then be with Brother Rob as he brings us that message. We pray that each and every one of us will have an open heart to hear what he has to say. And we pray that if anyone is here and needs you in their heart, we pray that they will make that decision today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jerry, so much. And good morning, church. He is risen. He is risen risen indeed. Amen. We're so glad that you chose to be with us today on this Easter Sunday. It's going to be a great day in the house of the Lord. I promise you that. We want to welcome all of you, especially those who might be visiting with us for the first time or perhaps you've been visiting for a while. You'll find a little card in the pew in front of you, in the pew rack in front of you. We would love for you to take your phone and scan that QR code and fill out that registration or you can manually fill out that card and then drop it in the wooden offering boxes as you leave the sanctuary today. 
Well, it's a great day in the house of the Lord. It's a great day to be a believer in Jesus Christ. It is our Super Bowl Sunday, as I like to say, and we're thrilled to be here and to be in the house of the Lord to worship Him. And this morning, we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and then worship Him in all of His glory. So join us as we worship this morning.
people said, no, don't sit down. You can't sit down after that. <laughs> Let's sing together. Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today.
praise you, Lord. Thank you, church, and be seated.
you like to speak, Jesus? <laughs> I would rather hear him this morning. Let's give our praise team and choir and orchestra and Jesus glory and honor to his name. Well, if we could just kind of peel back heaven this morning, we would see that what we've experienced in a reenactment is really what's happening in heaven. And on this Easter Sunday, what we celebrate that Jesus is alive and well, all the host of heaven observe that. The one who is the Lamb of God, standing, having been slain, but standing victorious over sin, over death, over hell, and reigning in heaven, and one day he will return. And he'll come, and we won't celebrate Easter here, but we'll celebrate Easter there if we know Jesus as our Savior and Lord. What a glorious day it is to celebrate the risen Lord. Across the world, people gather as we did this morning and uh, greet each other with that familiar, familiar greeting. He is risen, and they reply to one another, He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. This morning as you come, I'm thrilled that you're here. I'm, um, uh, this is my first time to be at Fairview on an Easter Sunday, and it's uh, just a thrill to be with you. This morning, I want to share with you my favorite Easter story, and it's found in Luke 24, and, and this message today is entitled, The Easter Experience, and here's why. Easter is more than an event that we come together to celebrate on one day. It's actually an experience that God wants us to enter into on a regular basis. It's an experience with the living Lord that starts with an encounter where we come face to face with Jesus. And this morning we see a physical representation of someone coming that looked a lot like Jesus, I think. I think that's what Jesus is going to look like. And yet we see a visible representation of what one day we will see fully. We see now through a glass, right, dimly, but one day face to face. And today we're going to see some disciples of Jesus who came together for an Easter experience. Joe Lemusia, in his uh, book, If I Should Die Before I Live, he writes these words. If I were to ask you to describe Easter without using any words, and you could only use punctuation marks, which punctuation mark would you choose to describe this Easter for yourself? I want you to think about that. How would you describe today? Some of you are scrolling through some punctuation marks. How, how would you describe it? He goes on, he writes this. Maybe this Easter is a, is a comma for you. It makes you stop, pause, think, and listen. But that's about it. Perhaps today is a downer, a big, bold period. You thought you would feel excited, but instead it seems to be more of an empty ritual. You feel as if you're not on the inside, but on the outside, an onlooker. It was this day when life became a period for Jesus' disciples. He was dead. He was buried. An end to expectation. But wait. News of an empty tomb. The period is no longer a period. It's a question mark, and that's worse than a period. Now they're beginning to doubt. Where is he? They're perplexed. The guards are gone. The stone is rolled away. He is not there. If not there, where? An angel speaks. Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and how he must be crucified, and the third day he must rise again? Of course they remembered. The periods are gone. The question marks are removed. There is one massive exclamation point. And that's what Easter's all about, an exclamation of gratitude and of praise for the resurrection of Jesus Christ and for the salvation, his victory over death, 
brought to all of us. My prayer today is that as we have the Easter experience, that we would encounter the living Lord. See, the Easter experience involves encountering the living Jesus and experiencing his power to make everything and everyone new. And you say, well, Rob, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see how that happens. I'd love to see that maybe in my own life. And so let's look at the scripture this morning in Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 13. Luke 24, 13. That very day, now this is Easter Sunday, the first Easter Sunday. It's apparently later in the day. A lot has happened that morning. The ladies went to the tomb. They had found the empty tomb. The angels had spoken to them. We, we know the story. Luke tells all of the story before he gets to this point. The disciples had come. They ran away saying to people, he's not here. And we saw an angel. Uh, they, 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 were, they were, everyone was just in a flurry. There was that exclamation point. But these two disciples seemed to have missed it that very day. These two of them, they were going to a village named Emmaus. And it's about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, it's probably why he was sad. <laughs> if your name's Cleopas, I'm so sorry. It's a beautiful name. Um, name your children that. But anyway, th then one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that, had, that have happened there in these days? And, and I think Jesus almost had to choke back a giggle. And he said to them, what things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped. Boy, when, you, when, when, your, when your hope is in the past tense you know you're in trouble. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. And moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And, then, and, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb, and they found it just as the women had said, but, they did, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and the prophets... And all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village in which they were going, and he acted as if he was going further. But they, argue, they, argue, they urged him uh, strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it, is for it was toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to, to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. 
and he vanished from their sight and they said to each other did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road while he opened to us the scriptures and they rose that same hour and they returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. May God bless his word and the reading of it this morning as we encounter the risen Jesus. Would you walk with me and see some of the change that happened as God made everything and everyone knew that he encountered that day? Encountering the living Jesus can change everything and everyone. And let's just look at a few of the things that we find in this, in this passage, in the living word of God, in the record of this moment. First of all, you'll see a new direction. Jesus can bring a new direction in life. These disciples, these two men, well, we don't even know if there were two men. We know they were disciples. That's all we know. One, Cleopas which, by the way, means glory to the Father. Isn't that interesting? That's what his name means. Another interpretation of that, uh, that name can be vision of glory. And yet, here he is. Uh, he's everything but that right now. And his direction, he's going away from Jerusalem. Where's all the action happening that day? Where are all the appearances happening? In Jerusalem the epicenter of all that God was doing in all time of eternity in all time in eternity was playing out in Jerusalem and yet they were going away from Jerusalem I want you to know there are times in our life that we're just going the wrong direction sometimes that happens in our personal lives maybe as you think about your life which direction are you going what's happening in your life and the, the, the end result was when they encountered Jesus they took a new direction they turned around from the way they were going and they went another way that's really what the, the word for repentance in the scripture is the idea of saying I am going the wrong direction with my life and I need to turn around and go a new way maybe on this Easter morning you would encounter the living Jesus and he would change your direction. Going the wrong direction can be dangerous. A few years ago, I was a um, uh, pastor in Chula, Mississippi. Actually, we were in the suburbs of Chula, Horseshoe Baptist Church. Horseshoe is in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the cotton fields surrounding Chula, Mississippi. So we were out in the suburbs of Chula. Um, and some of y'all get that when you're driving home. There aren't any suburbs in Chula. Anyway, so... And, and, and uh, we, we had a tragedy that day in, uh, in the community. Um, two people hit head on on one of these country roads, hit head on, and one was killed, and the other was airlifted to Jackson. And, and I'll never forget that. It was, it was just dramatic. It was family, two family members who ran into one another. And we all um, sorted through what was happening. Just uh, we were at church when it happened. And um, later that evening, I, I went to the hospital in Jackson where uh, one of the men had been airlifted. The one, the, the survivor had been airlifted. The nephew, he had, his uncle had died in the collision in the other vehicle. And I went and visited with him. He was just, uh, as you can imagine, devastated but uh, we were leaving the hospital that night. I remember driving back, and we were on the interstate. And, and on the interstate, suddenly it looked like there was a, a car coming, two lanes going this way, two lanes going this way. But in this lane, in my direction, the direction I was going that way, a car was coming in, the, in my lane. And I remember seeing that car, and I was like, they're going the wrong direction. Somebody had gotten confused. Somebody was, and, and, and I just started yelling, you're going the wrong direction. And I thought, well, they can't hear me. So I started flashing my lights. I even started kind of swerving a little bit, thinking maybe they'll slow down or move away. But they didn't, so I just moved to the right. And then I watched in horror in my rearview mirror as that car would slam into another car about 200 yards behind me. 
And we would go and we'd run back to the scene and luckily everyone was alive, but you can imagine. But because that day I had already seen the devastation of what happens when you're going the wrong direction. And I wanted to do everything I could to stop that, prevent that from happening. And Jesus that day, he goes out of his way to two disciples who are just going the wrong way. And he takes time and he loves them enough to say, look, I, I, I have a word for you. And, and he, he changes their direction. It says they go back to Jerusalem. But the, there's not only a new direction, there's a new discussion. They're, they're talking along the way. Jesus says, hey, what, what are you talking about? And they start talking to Jesus about what they had been talking about. And, and, and they started sharing about what had happened that day. And if you listen closely to their words that we read a few moments ago, everything that they said was the Easter message minus their conviction that it was true. They said all the right things. But they said it in a way that you knew they didn't believe it. Folks, Jesus, when you meet Jesus, he changes the kinds of things that come out of your mouth. He changes the kind of conversations you have with each other in the parking lot at church or at the ball field or at the hunting camp. He, he changes all of that. He changes how you interact with people in the workplace. He, he changes our discussion, what we have to say one to another. Jesus had said in another place, he said, out of, out of the overflow of the heart, we speak. And in this moment the overflow of their heart, we see that Jesus changed them. Probably the most powerful moment in their conversation or discussion was we had hoped. That's, the, that's what tips us off, verse 21, that at one time they had placed their hope in Jesus, but at this moment it had become a dashed dream with the excruciation, uh, excruciating uh, experience of watching Jesus die on the cross, of the devastation of his death being placed in the tomb, the grip of grief that began to, to grab hold of their hearts in those hours uh, before the Sabbath and, and, and the long, silent Saturday that they had experienced. Jesus was in the tomb three days, just barely though, just barely was he buried on a Friday evening and then the next day started at sundown. Then he was in the tomb all day Saturday and then Sunday just as dawn was breaking the symbol of a new day, he rose again. He was in there three days but just barely. He stayed long enough to fulfill the prophecy but not long enough for you and I to lose hope. And he comes bursting out of that grave and loves these two disciples enough to say, let me help you with what you're talking about. Let, let, let me give you new, fresh hope in your discussion. Jesus changed their discussion in, in verse 33 and 34. If you go and you, you read on, it, it says they went to the disciples and they're like, he is risen emphatically. He is risen indeed. They didn't just say, he's risen. They're like, Guys, it's true. He's alive. And he appeared to us. And you know the disciples had to say, why would he go to Emmaus to meet with you, Cleopas? Cleopas is like, I don't know. But he's alive. And his discussion had changed, but also his demeanor. There was a new demeanor about him. Demeanor is how we carry ourselves, right? Jesus looked and it says that, that when he came and he, their eyes were downcast and their fa in fact, the fact that it literally says their faces were fallen. Looks like some of y'all in church sometimes. You know, some of y'all, your favorite, you know, you kind of sit there and frown a little bit. That is not a fruit of the Spirit, folks. Come on now. Look a little, look a little alive, right? 
not you that was last week's crowd but you know what I'm saying it, it, it's it, it's something that if our demeanor is grumpy and downcast and when people see us they think I think I'll go the other way there's something that needs to be changed in our hearts and Jesus said well why are you talking about what you're talking about why do you look the way you look and they said have you not heard who could blame them who, who, who could overlook what had happened does he not know but then something happened there was a joy that came in their heart when they realized that he is alive he's alive and we've met with him their demeanor changed instead of looking down they started looking up instead of instead of frowns <laughs> we used to have a, a little guy on our uh, played baseball with my sons and he's just a character and he, he he was not a great baseball player but he was a great cheerleader on the team um, my b boys weren't great baseball players either but but the, the he, he he would often say it, like he would strike out and then later in the game he'd get a hit and I can always remember as he would come back into the dugout between game uh, between innings he would say say I would say man you're smiling now he said pastor Rob getting a single will turn that frown upside down their frown got turned upside down because they realized who Jesus was a new demeanor but that's not all there's one actually two more the, the, the next one I want you to see is there's a new devotion man their hearts went from being broken to being ignited to, to not just being ignited they they were enlightened Je Jesus sits down with them and he says let, let me let me explain some things to you let, let me just show you what's going on and, and and the change that happens as he explains it and and he takes them through the scriptures and, and it says he explained it about himself you know Jesus had to say he said oh, okay he said oh, oh foolish how foolish you are the, the word foolish means slow and it's specifically the idea of not being able to put puzzle pieces together that should be able to logically go together together and Jesus said how slow are you and, and you know Jesus was like hello look right here I don't know if he had, I don't know why they couldn't see him but Jesus there in that moment he I love this how foolish and slow to believe the, the issue was not so much that they couldn't understand what had happened but they couldn't embrace what had happened oh that the change that came in their hearts would come in ours and they went from a past tense devotion to a present tense absolutely combustion of their hearts as Jesus said oh let me explain it in Genesis I am, I mean um, Jesus is the creator you know he had to let go I, I know Jesus just wanted to lower the boom and say I am you know I am the creator Genesis I am uh, he was the creator he was the ram at Abraham's altar that would take the place of Isaac and then Exodus I am I mean uh, he was you can hear Jesus he, he, he was the great high priest and the lamb without blemish and then, then, then in numbers <laughs> I, I, I mean I, he, he was <laughs> he, he was the, the cloud of day by uh, the, the pillar of cloud by day and the cloud of fire by night 
He was the bread who came down out of heaven. Can't you imagine this Bible study happening on the road to Emmaus? In Deuteronomy, he is the strong tower. He is the one who is the righteous fulfillment of the law that we could not keep. And on and on and on. In Isaiah, he was the suffering servant. In Jeremiah, he was the weeping prophet who has a plan and a, a hope-filled future for you and for me. And on and on he went. He's, he, he described to them the, the law, Moses' teachings, and the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. He is the one who understands our brokenness and our laments when we cry out. And he's the one who brings new mercies every day. And then, y'all tracking with me? Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel. In Ezekiel, he is the one who comes to us and changes our lives. In Daniel, he is the fourth man in the fiery furnace that nobody, who is that guy? And it's Jesus. And he explains to them, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, he is the faithful husband. He's the faithful Lord who, who chases after us and pursues us even when we are unfaithful. And Joel he promises us that he will baptize us with his Holy Spirit and Amos and Obadiah and Obadiah is our burden bearer, bear, bearer. Obadiah, Jonah he, he's the great missionary who, 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 who gives a message to share Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zechariah, Malak, uh, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah and Malachi you didn't know you were going to get all those prophets today did you? Malachi is the one who comes with healing in his wings. And something about that, just flame, there was just a little flicker. And then the fire grew. And the fire grew some more. And the fire grew some more. And before long, there was a blaze. When we lived in Amory, Mississippi, um, years ago, we lived in the parsonage, which meant don't mess up the, the house is what that means if you're a kid living in that. And, and uh, my mom one day said, Rob, I want you to clean out the fireplace. And I was like, okay, it sounds fine. And she said, but don't, don't make a mess, please. Well, you know, ashes, you know, okay. So I started scooping that sucker out, and she had a box, and she had a, remember paper bag, some of y'all, paper plastic, you know, that uh, we had a paper grocery bag. And I was just putting that in there, and uh, I set it down in the den on our rug and then I thought well I'm finished I'll come back and get that in a minute and I got distracted before long I hear my mom scream the den's on fire the den's on fire and I was like who did that <laughs> and I come running in there I'm about 10 years old and I come running in there and we're you know we're you know trying to extinguish that fire what had happened was those fire the embers of that fire that had looked like it was just ash deep down inside there was something there that could reignite and it did and probably to this day <laughs> there's a hole in the carpet in that pastorium uh, in the den no I think they replaced it thank goodness but, but I remember that moment and I thought of that as these disciples listened and they got to their destination and said hey could you stay with us a little longer and he said well I got some places to go I got some people to see and they're like could you just stay and he goes okay and, and then all of a sudden he, 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 he took bread and he thanked the father for it and, and I don't know what it was about how he broke the bread maybe they were there when he fed the 5,000 I don't know maybe, maybe he was there or they had heard about when he broke the bread and said this is my body broken for you or maybe it was as he held that bread that suddenly they saw the nail prints in his hand and for the first time they went it's him and just as soon as they encountered Jesus they experienced the power of the resurrection and then he disappeared. He had things to do. 
And at this moment, we see this picture as they said, did not our hearts burn within us as we walked along the way with him? Didn't the things that he say reignite something in us? And friends, there was a new devotion and passion for Jesus, and I hope it might happen to us today. I hope that we might gather here not just sing songs and listen to sermons but we might encounter the risen Jesus and we might experience the life giving power of Jesus and there might be a new devotion in our hearts that says Jesus you are worth everything you are worth all praise and glory and dominion and power you are the one who is worthy of my life Jesus there's a new devotion and there's one last thing there's a new determination as a result of that they said we got to go they didn't even pack up they did that very hour they left and they went back to jerusalem and they found the disciples and they said look i know y'all don't believe this but it's true he is risen he's risen indeed and they are determined and they are committed and they are saying look follow him and then jesus uh, uh suddenly uh, appears to them even as they're talking and and all of a sudden jesus starts to talk to them and and they're startled and then verse 45 he said or, or verse 44 he says these words if you have the scripture there uh, then he said to them these are my words that i spoke to you while i was still with you and, and these were them that everything written about me in the law of moses and the prophets and the psalms must be fulfilled and then he goes on then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures all of a sudden not just these two on Demaeus uh, on the road to Demaeus all the disciples are there and he opens their mind this idea is to broaden the horizons to say guys this isn't about a single event on the calendar this is about an encounter with me that I will walk with you I'll talk with you and you can experience this on a daily basis in your life he would say, you are witnesses of this. You have experienced this. And you are going to go preach my name. And there'll be people who will repent and their life will be changed just like your life was changed because they encountered me. Wow. Wow. That's the Easter experience. And so I ask you today, just like these disciples experienced him. What, what might Jesus want to make new in you today? What, what does Jesus want to, to make new in you or to do in a new way in your life? He brought you here today and you didn't just stumble into this place and maybe a place you come all the time and maybe a place that you're coming for the first time, but you're not here by accident. You're here by divine appointment because the living Jesus wanted you to be here today. And he asked, can I do something new in you? Change your direction? Change the discussion? Pessimism is not a spiritual fruit. Maybe you need to change that critical discussion that you have and turn it into to more hopeful words D does he need to change in you maybe your demeanor maybe you got a hard exterior and everybody that knows you knows that or an angry exterior and it just seems like it, all it takes is just one one little touch and boom could he change your demeanor today maybe it's a hard heart that you have Maybe a skepticism about the things of God, and I get it. Maybe you're skeptical about church or people or other church people. Guess what? They're not perfect either. The way you get into church is to admit that you're a sinner. That's how we get in. None of us are perfect, right? We need a Savior. And so maybe today the Lord would change your demeanor. Maybe it'd change your devotion. Maybe you're kind of half hearted kind of you know sometimes you're in sometimes you're out but the lord says no i i want you to have a full-hearted devotion maybe maybe it's maybe it's your determination you're really committed to the things of the lord in the past but somewhere along the line you just said i'm out i mean you're still in with jesus 
But when it comes to serving him and serving his purposes, you just kind of, I did that, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. And maybe today you would have an encounter with the living Jesus. There's a man um, named Alfred Atchley, and uh, he, he, um, he was a, a pastor, and he wrote music too, wrote songs. And um, he was approaching Easter, and at the same time, a couple of things were happening. One, he was witnessing to uh, a, a friend of his who was a student in, uh, in, a, in a university in uh, California, and, and he would share the gospel with this young man. And the young man said, why should I worship a dead Jew? Good question. And Alfred Ashley would say, because he's not a dead Jew, he's alive. He rose from the dead. At the same time, on, on Easter Sunday morning, he woke up early and there was a, a, a pastor back on the East Coast. He was in California and, and, and he heard this guy preaching a message and he said, I really don't know if Jesus, if Easter is really a celebration of a, of a Jesus that, that rose again. I don't know. But it doesn't really matter to me because we're still gonna worship him. And he thought, that's not right. If there is no resurrection from the dead, if there's no Jesus, there's no good news of the gospel, right? If, there, if there's just a dead Savior, uh, then he's really no Savior at all. He has to be the living Lord. And Alfred, Alfred, Alfred Ackley was, was struggling with this. And his wife said, sounds like you need to write a song. And so he sat down and began to read the gospels again, reread them and they just pierced his heart and he started writing I serve a risen Savior he's in the world today I know that he is living whatever men may say I see his hand of mercy I hear his voice of cheer and just the time I need him you know it he's always near he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me, he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. And so on this Easter, I want to just want to give you a little something to take with you today. Next week, we're going to start a new series of messages on a praying life. And you'll still see some symbols on the, the, um, on the screen. And, and when you leave today, um, if you would like, we, we, we want to just use this as a little tool uh, and, and something to remind you of this day but also in the series, a teaching um, a moment. But, but on this Easter, how does Jesus want to do something new in you? It's right here on these bracelets. And grab one on your way out. Take one for a friend, whatever. They'll be available next week. But what Jesus invited them into was a life of intimacy with him. And he taught us how to pray. And, and that day he modeled this relationship and, and here, here, here are four things I want to just challenge you as we close today first of all when you want to see Jesus do something new in you look up raise your head get out of the past tense and start looking at what God wants to do in you today and then look in look into your heart what are the things that God might want to, to change and shape and refine and renew and be willing to confess that sin and, and, and to turn from one direction and go another? Look in. Let him search you. And then look around. <laughs> look around at the other people. These disciples on the road to Emmaus, they said, we need to be with some other believers. We need to be in community with somebody else. We need, we need to make sure that we, we celebrate this with other people who had a past tense hope, and we need to bring it into the present. Look around you. Look, could you just look around today? Isn't this a magnificent group of people gathered together? 
just the encouragement that comes before you leave today tell somebody man you look great today even if you have to lie it's fine it's Easter it's fine but tell them you're glad that they're here you may not know them it may, it, hey here's a news flash if you don't know their name it'd be a great opportunity to say hey I don't know your name could you tell me your name I'm so glad you were here today why because Jesus still goes out of his way through his people to reach out to people who are not insiders he still goes after people with the name Cleopas and people we don't even know their name because that's what Jesus does look around you not just in church but wherever you go because you are the church wherever you go and take him to others and then finally look ahead it is not over yet God has great things in store for his people it's not over people the story's still being written Jesus said it is in my name that you will go and you'll preach the gospel you'll go to the ends of the earth and wherever you go, you'll get to share with them who Jesus is. My favorite Easter story that I've ever experienced was my first Sunday when I was a pastor in California. And God led us to be a pastor out there. And everybody said, hey, don't you know that there are earthquakes out there? Don't you know that there are fires out there? And there are crazy people out there. And we were like, yeah. I said, we're coming from Mississippi. We've got tornadoes and we've got mosquitoes and we got crazy people everywhere you look so not a lot of difference but there was a need and we went and my first Easter Sunday morning we, we had a baptism at the end and, and, and a, a girl was with her dad her name was Lexi and, and Lexi uh, a beautiful uh, I, I guess 19 she was a college student 19 20 year old I think a freshman or, or sophomore she was there with her dad and her dad was following Jesus that day in baptism he was about 45 at the time Brian and I, I just met him and he said yeah Jesus has been doing and a lot in my life and I, I want to follow him today and so he he was baptized and th and then and then I said if anybody else today wants to follow Jesus publicly as a believer come on we we're outside as a kind of a swimming pool kind of thing horse trough kind of thing and all of a sudden Lexi said I want I want I want to be baptized her dad was in the water and and we were like all right and she had her Easter dress on and uh and and we were like uh we didn't we ain't got time to change but um somebody we had some t-shirts they said here wear this t-shirt and I said do you know Jesus she said yeah I've just been afraid to follow him in baptism but I want to I, my dad did it today and I want to I want to be baptized with my dad so she climbed up put that t-shirt on that said something like I'm new in Christ and she climbed into those waters in her Easter dress and she was baptized that day professing Jesus as her Savior and Lord it's one of my favorite all time Easter stories and the reason it's so powerful to me is because she had the Easter experience she encountered Jesus and he made things new and he can do it for you too we could probably baptize you today if you need it if you want it or today you could come and say, I want to follow Jesus, or I want to join this church family, uh, or I, I, I want us to sing so we can go to lunch. I get it, I know, I know, I get it. But there's nothing more important than what Jesus might do in your life today. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that you have gone out of your way to do the impossible and the amazing. You not only died for sinners like us, but you defeated the grave. And today we come, Jesus, and we want to experience you. Uh, Lord, we know your, your word says, and one day we'll see you face to face, but, but today we are reminded that your word says that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you are there. And we believe you're here with us this morning. Lord, I pray if there's someone in this room 
has never come to faith in you, I pray today that they would hear you calling their name. That, that you would come close and though a room full of hundreds this morning, they would hear personally and powerfully that you love them, you care for them, and you did it for them. I pray today their heart might burn within them. And they might open their heart and believe in you today, Jesus. For others, Lord, that are in this room that know you, I pray that we would have a fresh encounter and you would... You would take the commas and the periods of our life and even the question marks and, God, that you would replace them with with an exclamation point today. That you are alive and you will give us life and you will guide our lives every step along the journey. Jesus, we want our lives to be wholeheartedly devoted to you. So we give you this time as we sing the words to this next song. We, we sing them with a conviction that, that you are the one that can make our hearts new. And, and in this time, um, as we sing and we reflect upon what you've spoken to us individually, maybe there are some that will have a public decision, Jesus, to say, I'm following Jesus today. Or I'm following Jesus Uh, as he leads me to be a part of this church family. I'm following Jesus because I want him to do a new work in my life. So help us to be obedient to what you've said. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, let's stand together as we sing. We're going to sing with all my heart, I want to love you, Lord. And if that's your prayer today, let's sing before him. There are pastors here at the front. If you have a decision, you'd like to follow the Lord this morning, they'll be here and they would love to talk with you and pray with you. Let's sing together these words. With all my heart, I want to love you, Lord, and live my life each day to know. yours completely I'll serve you only with all my heart with all my heart I want to love you Lord and live my life each day to know you more all that is in me is yours completely I'll serve you so much. Please be seated. Let's watch these announcements. We are looking forward to Dr. Sean Parker speaking about our personal prayer life and how we can improve our time with the Lord at our event, Lord Teach Us to Pray. It will be held in the Activities Building on Saturday, April 13th from 8.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. Dr. Parker will address the topics of who, what, when, why, and where of our personal prayer lives. Please register today at FVB Church forward slash events. Wednesday night activity resume this week. Our Annie Armstrong Easter offering goal is $52,000. We have collected $23,701. Please watch this video. Have a happy Easter. A missionary here? You mean that's a thing? Well, there's 281 million lost people in the U.S. and Canada. So, yeah, it's a thing. But there's one question no one ever asked me, and I wish they would. No one ever asked where is the finish line. We start churches to make Jesus known. We meet needs to make Jesus known. 
We move to unfamiliar places, we meet unreached people, and we attempt unrealistic things just to make Jesus known. There is nothing more important than that. Nada. Nothing at all. Jesus said, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. And so that's what our finish line looks like. It looks like obedience, same as your finish line. <laughs> God speak, you give, we go. Everything starts with your gift, so the any I'm strong is the offering. Those gifts enable us to go places where the gospel has never been. This is where we cross our finish line. This is where, together, we make Jesus known. Amen. Do you all know that a week does not go by that I do not meet somebody that, number one, has never heard of Fairview Baptist Church, nor do they know where we are? Number two, a week doesn't go by that I don't meet somebody that's never been introduced to Jesus right here in Columbus, Mississippi. So let's make Jesus known. Let's take that message out into the highways and byways right around here, right around the steeple of our church. So what a great day today. Hey, guests, we have a special gift for you. Located out several of our doors at Welcome Center are some gift bags for you. We want you to take one. There's lots of goodies in there for you. We'd love to have that in your hands. Take it this afternoon and look through it. Also, don't forget to pick up your bracelets uh, this morning as you leave. Let's stand together this morning and sing about our Savior who lives. Who lives.